Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Furman Athletics. I am the voice of the pal, and it's Dan Scott. Good to be back with you. Hope that uh, you had a great weekend and that your new week is off to a good start. And uh, we're going to spend some time. Always gets my week off to a good start. I don't get to talk to this lady nearly enough. But uh, Jackie Carson, the women's basketball coach here at Furman, uh, is joining us this week. How are you? I'm good. You? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. As, as I told you before we got started, we're recording this on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. You have practice at 11. You, you're, you, just, you get styled up even for practice. Yeah, you no, know, you have to be consistent, Dan. You have to be consistent. So we're going to be distinct. We're going to stick out for the right reasons. And so, yeah. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. How you been? Good. Good. I, How about you? I, I, am, I am well. Thank Good. you for asking. I have asked every coach this that we've talked to so far, so I will be consistent and ask you. It's not 100% back to what we call quote-unquote normal, but you're doing normal basketball things at normal times of the year, including the summer. How has that been compared to, say, this time last year? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot better than last year. Last year was extremely tough, not only for our coaching staff, but also for our players. Um, you know, we had eight freshmen last year that really had no idea what it was like to be a college student. They were pretty isolated. There was no extracurricular activities. They were getting tested three times a week. It was just a scary time. Couldn't go home. Season was shortened. I mean, you name it, it was the most uh, challenging season I've ever been a part of. But, yeah, we're slowly getting back to what I guess is our new normal, um, and um, I'm excited about the future. So I, I have said this on a, a number of occasions, but it remains true. I just want to get back to what I call my normal level of abnormality. If I yes. can, if I can get there, I'm happy. Yes, yes. If I could just get to the point where I'm not terrified of testing every week <laughs> and scared of who might pop in testing and scared that I might pop in testing and if my assistant coaches are ready, like if I can get back to that, I'll be great. Yeah, well, yeah. It gives us something to look forward to and a goal right. to uh, shoot for. H how has the uh, preseason been so far? You've been practicing right mm -hmm. now, heading towards a November 12th season opener. How's, uh, how's the preseason gone so far? Yeah, you know what? I, 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 a lot of coaches can't say this. I truly love my team. Like, they are working their butts off. They are just full of energy. They're doing everything that we ask. We are fairly young, you know, so I say all the time, I have no idea how many games we're going to win, but I know I enjoy coaching them every single day. So it's been great. A lot of challenges. Their heads are spinning a little bit, the, the new kids, but uh, I'm super happy to, to be leading them. Fairly young might be an understatement because, as you were telling me, 13 freshmen and sophomores and four seniors, only two of which have any what you would call qualify as, as great deal of experience. So, uh, and no juniors in between. So yeah. th this is a, um, a lot of unknowns with this team. Right. Well, absolutely. And then with our league, <laughs> our league brought back a lot of experience. So we're really much, pretty much throwing them into the fire immediately. Um, Mercer, who's, you know, a perennial powerhouse, they brought back all their seniors for their COVID year. Um, Sanford brought back a, a bunch of seniors, and, and both programs added a bunch of transfers. So the league is going to be super experienced and heavy, but I like being the underdog. I like that there's no expectations. I like that these young kids are fearless. Um, and that goes back. I, I just I'll never forget it. Last year, you know, we had an opportunity. Our, our schedule was constantly changing. We got, we lost a home game. I remember we were on the bus. We just had a great win at, at Georgia Southern. And we got alerted that one of our game home games got canceled. So, you know, we have people calling us all times last year. And it was, you know, Tennessee and, a, and another mid-major called. And I said, hey, we can go to Tennessee and we can play that game. Or we could go to this other school in the Big South and we have to play there. We can play that game. You know, obviously we'd have a, a better shot at winning against, you know, um, you know a, a mid-major opponent. Which one do you want to do? And they said, without a doubt, let's go play at Tennessee. So, I, I like that fearless. I like that they don't they're not backing down. You just we just gotta get prepared and get that experience lined up on the playing field. Or court. I'm on the court. I, I was <laughs> I was well, we were overlooking a yeah, field. Yeah, I was here. looking at a football <laughs> field. It was a great win by the college. Uh, yes, so. it was. Uh we, we were. I was joking with you before we started recording today that uh, among the seniors you have and of the two players that you have with a great deal of experience, uh, getting Tierra Hodges signed to a new five-year contract. Yeah. yeah, I mean so she has been here forever, hasn't she? She is a sixth-year senior. Uh, thank you for the COVID year. Um, it's just got a little bit unheard of at Furman because we don't have a ton of uh, masters programs, but. Um, 
she was going to turn pro and really, gosh, it was so late about two weeks before the season. Then she comes and she's like, I've changed my mind. And I was like, oh, goodness. So we had to do a lot of stuff to get her back. Um, you know, we had to change something with our academic load. We had to get a waiver from the NCAA because she had underloaded, and you can't do that until your last year of eligibility. So understanding all the COVID protocols and what was going on, they, they did give her the waiver. So she is back, and a lot of Furman fans and her coaching staff and her teammates are extremely happy. I, I was going to say, when, <laughs> when, when she said – I've changed my mind. I want to come back. I noticed you didn't say, nah, we're no, good. We're you know, good. We're good. You know, no, you never say that about that <laughs> caliber of young lady and uh, players. So, so, no. What, what, so, what will it mean to this young team to have her here for another year? You know what? This is also another time from last year. We had, again, eight freshmen. And, you know, during the recruiting process, a lot of kids are going to look at the roster and see who's graduating. And so those freshmen saw, okay, I play one year with Tierra Hodges, and then she's going to graduate. That usually opens the door for playing time. The biggest advocates trying to convince her to come back last year was our freshman class. And they were like, we want her back. She's going to help us win a championship. Talk about the ultimate unselfish attitude. Mm -hmm. So it, it means a lot to them because she is – these her teammates – and I would love to say her coaches, but it's really her teammates are the ones who convinced her to come back. And, I mean, th that's rare right now. That's rare. A lot of kids are looking at, you know, how can I get on the floor? How can I make the most impact? And, obviously, she's going to be on the floor at all times. So, for her teammates to be the one that want her and welcome her back the most, that, that's pretty special. Yeah, because if she comes back, that's going to take away significant minutes from not just one person, but maybe two or multiple, three people. Yeah, she plays multiple positions. So, it's going to take away anyone who's in that two, three spot, or excuse me, that really the two through four spot. And so, but the ones who are – begging her to come back, play those positions. So it's, it's a really amazing. This is Inside Furman Athletics, our weekly look, oddly enough, inside the <laughs> Furman University Athletic Department. I'm Dan Scott. This is Jackie Carson. We're talking women's basketball. We'll, we'll circle back to the team and, and uh, the upcoming season here in a bit, but uh, I, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about your inaugural Hoops and Hills event that just wrapped up uh, last week as, as we we're doing this uh, as a, uh, a dual-purpose event from from what I understand a, a fundraiser for the basketball program but Correct. also uh, a women's empowerment event for the uh, the Greenville area um, you had Muffet McGraw in did, a, yeah. as your your very first keynote speaker how did the night go oh my gosh yeah, we we knocked it out of the park you know it was way more than I expected for an inaugural event Muffet was she was phenomenal and I had a amazing group of women surrounding us that were a committee that helped get this event off the ground. I was so nervous. I was more nervous for this event than I have been for any game, any championship game as a player, as a coach. I just wanted it to be phenomenal and it it turned out to be better than I ever expected. Muffet is such an inspirational speaker. She is the, the queen of empowerment. Um, she dropped so many nuggets that not only hit women but uh, you know affect men and the allyship they you know they give for supporting women in general and the workforce and athletics. So it was phenomenal. And so I, I have so many thank yous. I, I think we would take the rest of the show if I had to thank everyone who was a, a played a part of that event. Oh, we could take as long as you need. Yeah. I know you've got <laughs> practice here in about uh, about 45 minutes. Um, did you reach the financial goals that you hoped to reach, or had you really set any financial goals for this first year? We didn't really set any. We really just wanted to get it off the ground, lay a foundation for something that we can build on in the future. Uh, I know we made money, so that's always a great thing. Um, it's definitely not going to be what I, I hope it will be in two to three years mm -hmm. um, as we just garner more su support throughout the, the community. But, yeah, we definitely made some money, so that's, all, that's a bonus. And, and just so our fans know – the, the, the financial aspect of it, we said it's a fundraiser for the program. What will that money be used for? How will it help the women's basketball program? Yeah, so, you know, our, our supporters, our, fan, our fans, are, you know, those who donate to our program, they're the lifeline of us. You know, we, we, we still have a ways to go before financially we're in a place to be self-sufficient. And so, we, you know, it helps us get upgraded gear, facilities. I know everybody's aware of the Timmons renovation that's going on. So it just adds an, an extra layer to those renovations. It ex adds an extra layer to how our players feel, um, giving us some perks of, of being a student athlete, travel, um, upgrading their travel experience. Uh, we, we like to make sure that they're eating great things and staying in great hotels and visiting amazing 
changing locations, um, stuff like this, like our Cal tournament that's mm -hmm. coming on. Many of our girls have never been to San Francisco. It allows us to get Cyan Dyke home um, in California. And so we have to, you know, without these donations and these fundraisers, we have to really limit our travel, especially air uh, travel. And so this just allows our, pro our program to propel forward. And we, we talked to Bob Ritchie a, a couple of shows ago uh, about the, the Timmons renovations. And, and I, I, I guess fans of the program, the ones who are or the donors, know that, that men's and women's basketball shared an office space yes. in, in, in the original configuration of Timmons Arena. Now, with the $3 million renovations that are still ongoing with the locker rooms mm -hmm. being redone, but now you have your own separate office space, the nice lobby space. I, I mean, it has upgraded what you are bringing players into uh, in, in a way that uh, a lot of people around here thought might never happen. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I can add an added layer of perspective. I had the same desk as my coach. Um, and the same furniture as my coach in the same configuration. I will say it has upgraded a little bit because when I was, um, Timmons was built my sophomore year. And so during that time, volleyball, basket, men's and women's basketball were all in there. So imagine mm -hmm. that space being shared by three sports right. and their coaching staffs. And then the locker room has changed a little bit, but it's not a space that is going to help us win any recruits. Um, and our girls need to be rewarded. I, I want to advance the program far beyond what it was when I was a player here. Mm -hmm. And so this renovation does that. You know, it gives them more than when, when I was a player. It, it's basically like a, a parent with children. You want your children to have better than you had. Exactly right. Exactly right. And I, I mean, that's I, I said it con countless times to, you know, those who are in charge of renovation. I want them to have double amount of what I had. So if that includes space, the graphics, the experience, whatever, that is my responsibility, especially as an alum and, and the leader of this program. I can't let them have exactly what I have. So these renovations, you know, do exactly that. But but I've been around here long enough and seen how you run your program and, and seen your practices and everything. You want them to have that, but you expect Expect them a to earn it and b to respect it. Oh, absolutely! Because I, I that's something that's going to carry on after this. You know, the ball stops bouncing. You know, that was part of our women's empowerment. <laughs> like you have to learn that you're going to have to work extra hard and you're going to have to earn every single thing that you're that you deserve. And so it's it's the same thing. If, if we want a championship, that's not given to us. You know, nobody's going to say, "Oh, you know, well, Furman." won a championship in 2000, so we're going to give you this one. They haven't won in a while. They're going to have to go take it, and they're, they're, it's going to be against some odds. Like I mentioned, our league is very good this year. So if you're going to want that level of respect and you're going to want that level of um, you know, giving back to our program, that you're going to have to show people it's worth it. Jackie Carson with us on this week's edition of Inside <clears throat> Furman Athletics, talking uh, well, everything that's going on with this women's basketball program who opens the regular season on November 12th at home against Presbyterian. There is an exhibition game mm -hmm. about four days prior to that. Right, correct. So we, we push back our opener a little bit, which it, it doesn't hurt us at all because it uh, gives us a little bit more prep time. But, yeah, we have an exhibition Monday. Opening night is normally on Tuesday, but we're going to open at home on uh, Friday the 12th against PC. We don't have a ton of home games. This is probably the least amount of home games, just the way the return games are set up this year. We lost a lot of games last year um, where we had to return. So um, not a ton of opportunities to come see this program this year, um, unless you do a little bit of traveling, which we don't. Um, we hope that you do as well. But 13 home games, so that's, that's small in our slate. So please come out and join us whenever you can. And again, that first one is November the 12th, but you, you kind of – highlighted a little bit of your schedule as most coaches at this level you're not afraid of of challenging your team in the non-conference schedule no. you're going to georgia you're going out to cal berkeley to play in that tournament where you'll play the university of california and san diego state and then you're also going to Ole miss yeah well, no, no. So the, the, all four of those teams are in the tournament. Okay. So we start with Cal Berkeley, and then we'll play the winner, hope, hopefully the winner of the Ole Miss-San Diego State game. Okay, so um, I misread your schedule. Yes, yes. So they, they, it's just the four teams that are participating in it. And it's the, the, the really cool thing about that tournament, it is um, uh, the basis of that tournament, it is four black female head coaches mm. in a tournament. So she organized it kind of as, again, a women empowerment and – um, almost a, a tournament featuring four black female head coaches. 
Okay, so the but the the Georgia game is at Georgia is, is at, at Georgia. Georgia, yes. <laughs> and then and then Cal, San Diego State, and Ole Miss are all at the Cal Classic. Yes, okay. correct. I got you. So I got the teams right. Yes, I, I you just, got it. I, I just threw Georgia in, uh, in, <laughs> yeah, in there. No, amongst Georgia them. is a is a beast all in itself. <laughs> Uh, that, that's a, that's a philosophy, as I said, that, uh, I, I think most coaches want to do that. Not all do some like mm-hmm. to stack their, their, uh, non-conference schedule with teams they know they can beat, but I, yeah. I, I don't think that philosophy really pays off when you get to a conference season. No, uh, we can't prepare again for the schedule that we have in conference play. Can't play a bunch of cupcakes um and not that there's any one cupcake on our schedule because we don't have any um, a lot of people are going to consider us the cupcake which I, I again I like but I mean uh, you mentioned Georgia and then Cal and then we play Georgia Tech as well which is the first time that we've played there uh, since I've been head coach but it's um we got some doozies and we have a lot of road games and we have to learn how to win on the road because uh, I would love it. The conference tournament will return back to Greenville, but it's not to Nashville. So that's our biggest hurdle right now. We have an amazing winning percentage at home. We have to learn how to win on the road and we've lost a lot of cl- close ones on the road. And you're going to do that with 13 freshmen and sophomores, yeah, sure right? Are. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> You ever sit back and wonder, what in the world have I done? Yes, all the time. <laughs> all the time. But then, like I said, when you go out and then you're able to coach this group that I have, then you then you realize it's worth it. What, what makes you think that despite that many young players and, and only two really experienced players, what, what makes you think this group has a chance to be special, has a chance to be successful? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, just their mentality and how they approach practice and, like, Dan, it's it's seventeen females, and we have no drama. Like you know how rare that is. That's a lot uh, of women. I'm, I'm not. You're you're going down a road that <laughs> you, I'm not allowed to go down. You uh, even you even, even even though I'm married with two daughters, daughters I'm, you know. I am not touching that uh, with a ten foot pole. Yeah, that is exact. That's the same. You your wife has trained you well, Dan. So, but that's happy a, wife, happy life, absolutely. ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely, but you know, it's we have really good chemistry. And we have girls that work hard. And, you know, it's, it's sad in recruiting right now. You have to recruit hard workers where it was it used to be a given. You have mm-hmm. to recruit leaders, which used to be a given. Um, we have that on our team right now. You know, the, I think someone like Tierra Hodges um, it finally has the, the group around her that is embracing – the tough days and embracing the leadership role that she's trying to get her teammates to have. And so that's now so contagious that that's why it makes me excited about this group. You know, my wife will say things like you said about working in an office with Mm -hmm. primarily women, but Nope, I ain't going yeah, no, there. I'll you just, just that's great, honey. Tip, yeah, tip, tip sure. your cap and, mm-hmm. and, and move on. And better you than me is normally right. what, what I tell her. <laughs> that's right. So, so what has to happen for this to be a successful season? It just you know, but obviously the the goal is to win a conference right. championship, go to the NCAA's. I, I understand that, but in in, in the in the smaller picture, what has to happen for this to be a successful year? Yeah, just keep building. You know, every single day. Right now, it's how long is it going to take for the pieces to come together on the court? Mm-hmm. You know, off the court, we're, we're good. We're solid. I have an amazing coaching staff. I, I did lose a good chunk of my staff um, going on to different opportunities and going back to the alma maters. But the the – the staff that I hired, oh, my gosh, I've knocked it out of the park. I, I couldn't be any happier with the, the people I have around me. I couldn't be happier with the players I have in my program and just the staff in general. So it's been a lot of changes, but sometimes change is good mm-hmm. and change causes, you know, some growth uh, mindset, and I think that's what it is. So it's just how long it takes for everything to come together, and, and once it does, it's going to be pretty special. Yeah, Pierre has been the one constant uh, in, in your program over the last few years. Does that kind of stability – besides somebody other than the head coach that does that help oh my gosh it's amazing it it helps one he's probably and I'm blessed to keep him every year but he's the best recruiter I've been around you know and um and he's very passionate he knows the game but to have him I think this is year nine I always lose track of it and he's literally like my little brother I've known him since he's 18 years old I was around on his official visit to James Madison and so we've been through a lot together he has my back and I it's my job to prep him to be a head coach I'm trying to get him out of the nest to go be a head coach and lead his own program and so I take that as serious as as I am trying to get these young women to be phenomenal um, women and mothers and professionals after mm-hmm. basketball so it's my job 
have to get him going, but he's been a lifeline for this program, and he's really caused it to elevate with the recruits and just his coaching. And there's there's no question that that this is your program, and and you are the head of the program, and make the decisions. There's no question about that. But you use the term he's like your little brother. Mm-hmm. Brothers and sisters fight. Oh, absolutely. Cats and dogs. Oh, and so, all the so, time. Is, so is there you and Pierre? Are the oh little... gosh, all the time. But you know what? Nobody ever knows it because well, the rest of the staff knows it because we're in there and we're battling. How would we want to guard this? How do we teach this? How do we do that? But just like any really good staff, as soon as that door opens and you walk out of the office, we're all on the same page. Mm-hmm. You don't know what kind of dissension there was or anything like that. Oh, my God, but he argues with me all the and time. And dissension's not really the right word, is no. it? No. Well, well, me and Pierre probably it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The rest but, will definitely tell their opinion, but Pierre, he's he's going to go to bat for what he believes. But but, but it's but it's all it's all positive because you're all trying to yes, get to the same place. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe a dissension in philosophy. <laughs> yeah. How you get there, but you're still trying to get. To oh, the but same we're place. all still going to the same spot. Yeah. So so, will this team be ready November twelfth? I think so. I think so. We'll find I would out, let, right? we'll, we'll see. <laughs> it's coming fast. So. Um, Again, I know they'll be ready to take the floor. I know, you know, as a coach, it's also mm-hmm. scary with the number of injuries we had last year. So I just pray that we stay healthy and that we can have a practice with our entire, um, you know, uh, players on the floor, which we haven't had yet. But we're, we're going to be ready to compete, and, you know, and it's going to take a little bit of gelling and a little bit outside of competition for the basketball to gel. But we'll be ready by February. <laughs> what, what, what type of team, what type of philosophy – uh, style of play are people going to see when this team takes the floor? Yeah, so we've we've adjusted our transition to try to score faster. Uh, we've had that in the past. Last year wasn't as fast as we like. We turned the ball over a little too much last year, and again, that happens with youth when, you know, at, there was points at season last year I looked and I was like, God, I have four freshmen on the court. And so with that, you're going to have some growing pains, and taking care of the ball last year was some growing pains that we have, but we're going to be a little bit grittier, I think, on the defensive end, and so we just have to learn to play fast without making as many mistakes and just to play a little bit more freer easy preaching hard living oh gosh absolutely i i it was funny yesterday i was begging them to look at the basket they're trying to share the ball too much like they're literally trying to make one more pass to their teammates i said ladies this is great but i need somebody to score so i I was like i've never in my life had to beg people to score so much and then when they flip their mentality oh my god we turn into an amazing team so when we can get them to be a little less selfish and go try to get a bucket, we're going to be really special. <laughs> that, that, I, I suppose that's a good problem to have, right? It is a good right? problem, yeah. That's totally a great problem. Well, we know one thing about it. When it comes push comes to shove, Tierra's not going to be shy about taking a big she's shot. She's not, and she turned it on yesterday in practice, and she showed that you know why she's here. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, get me the ball, right? That's right. Exactly right. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to uh, what I hope is going to be a fun season for both the men and the women, uh, and, and oh, we we don't want to let it get away without saying that one of those home games will be part of a men's women's doubleheader mm-hmm. at, at uh, Bon Secours Wellness Arena, yes. right? Yes, so that's January 8th, and it's <clears throat> going to be pretty exciting. That was an amazing environment. So thankful to our administration, Jason Donnelly, for allowing us to have those weekends at the well. Um, yeah, so we, we play one there up there this year. We were going to try to have two, but the, the second doubleheader is senior night. And I want our seniors, mm-hmm. especially like a Tierra Hodges to play at home for their senior night. So we made that change. And I was going to ask you about philosophy because, you know, when, when you, you start talking about treating programs the same way, giving the same benefits, playing downtown obviously is important, but mm. I, I know that for instance, uh, North Carolina State, mm-hmm. North Carolina, when those brand new arenas opened, they went there, but then the women's programs took themselves back to mm-hmm. the on-campus, the smaller arena, so th- th- there are, I guess, varying ways you can look at that as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of people don't understand this. Men's programs, with their um, attendance, thrive on numbers. Women's programs thrive on intimacy. You know, so we don't draw as many fans, but we have really passionate fans. So you don't want to drown those fans out by having a huge arena. That's not what our programs are about. But if you come to Timmins Arena and you see how passionate our our circle of fans and our loyal fans are, then it sounds like it's just as vibrant Mm -hmm. as if you go to a full men's game. So we don't thrive on the numbers. Uh, I love that, especially our other student athletes from other sports, they're tremendous, you know, ambassadors and fans for our programs. But we thrive on the intimacy of the fans that we do have follow our program and not so much on the numbers you'd love to thrive on the numbers oh i would love to 
the more the merrier. Everybody join in. Yeah, it would be a good problem to have. Yeah. So November the 12th, Presbyterian at home, uh, one of 13 opportunities to see this team play at home. Yes, yeah, in the regular season. So we, that's why we snuck in one more exhibition game. So technically 14, but yeah, 13 regular season games. So. I like it. Jackie, thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. That is Jackie Carson, and we have been talking women's basketball on this edition of Inside Furman Athletics. We'll be back again next week with more and uh, hopefully have an, another wrinkle or two, a new wrinkle or two, I should say, to throw at you when we get going uh, in the next week or two. But uh, check out the uh, women's basketball program again November 12th against Presbyterian College here at Timmins Arena to open the regular season. Until next week, I'm Dan Scott. Again, thanking all of you for joining us in Inside Furman Athletics. Until next time, God bless you and so long, everybody. Mm-hmm.